Hello Isopod fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Isopod. Welcome to another video on the Isopod vlog. Normally you come here to find out tips and techniques to help you improve your care for your isopods. Today it's going to be a little bit different in two ways. One way I'll talk about later. The second way is that this is not a video showing how we did something right. It's a video showing how something went wrong in our facility. So stay tuned, and I hope you can learn from this situation. The Isopod Vlog. Welcome back. I mentioned that there's going to be two differences to this video as opposed to the previous videos that I've done. One, to, one difference is that I'm going to talk about a situation that caused some problems with our isopods recently, and I'm going to get into a little bit of those details in just a minute. The other difference is that this video is going to be minimal uh, editing, and it certainly will save us a lot of time over this Thanksgiving holiday, and also we're going to try the, to see if this will work. So let's get to some feeding of these isopods. I was right in the middle of feeding the isopods, and I wanted to do this video to explain the situation. As you can see, I keep these isopods on this cart. I have these tubs that work out really, really well for us. They're 27 quarts, and they stack up really nicely on this cart. It allows us to keep 12 different tubs, and the smaller tubs we keep 24. Works out perfect. One thing that you'll notice is that we have them, these tubs labeled. Here we have powder blues, dairy cows, we have another container of powder blues that I'm consolidating into the first one and all the way down the line. Here's a, a tub of Porcelio species Savella. And let me just bring this out and I'll talk about this tub. I'll see if I can get some close-ups of these in just a moment. Maybe I'll roll some video of the previous video that I did of these uh, wonderful isopods. We received these uh, a number of months ago from uh, a wonderful vendor. I'll put the information in the description below. But we received about, I would say, 70 to 80 of these isopods. I normally don't check these isopods that frequently, about once a month, once every six weeks at the most. Um, I actually did a video on this uh, last week, and you can see that video by clicking on this link right here or right here. So recently I checked on these Sevilla and I noticed that we're down to about 20 to 25. And I wasn't sure what would cause a situation like that. Well, going through the uh, cork bark here in the uh, decaying wood, I found out why we're down to so few of these Porcelia species Sevilla. I have a culture of powder blues in here. And I didn't notice because powder blues breed so quickly. So we have these powder blues, we have these powder blues here and here, and the powder blues have somehow gotten out of these tubs. You can see that there's, there's some gaps here. They, they fit pretty snugly, but they can get out. The powder blues got into these species Sevilla, and I feel that the powder blues took over this culture. The Sevillas are still doing well. We still have, like I said, quite a few of these. I'll see if I could grab a view here of these guys. But if you notice, I just noticed one or two powder blues still in here. And I've tried to clean this out as much as I possibly could in the last uh, week or so. So let me put this back. So what causes that or what caused this problem? A couple of different things. Number one, I had the powder blues over the Sevilla. And with them getting out, they got into the Sevilla colony. Um, I think the babies probably crawled up the screen. I've got these screen uh, vents. And I think that they might have gotten in between these screens if there's any holes whatsoever. Or climbed through the tops and gotten down and into these Sevilla. So we, again, we've cleaned these out as much as possible. But in the future, what I'm going to do is certainly put these powder blues down below. I had an issue with uh, peach as well, um, the Sodom peach uh, getting into a couple of cultures as well. 
and I've remedied that by putting them uh, down below so that if any do get out, they go down into an, uh, an empty container. But the biggest change that I'm going to make is I'm going to go over to, uh, let me put this top back on just real quick here and I'll show you what I'm going to do to change the situation. So I'm going to migrate all of these tubs and, and this works out really well, this rack for me, but this is actually a temporary situation. We keep our uh, crusted gecko overflow, babies for crusted geckos on these racks. I have all kinds of uh, tubs made up for these uh, crusted geckos, but right now at this point, I don't have uh, the overflow that I haven't had in the past. So this, this um, rack, has functioned very well for an isopod rack. So I like this rack, but I think I'm going to go away from it, even though the storage is just excellent, but I'm going to go to different tubs. Let me show you a couple of the different tubs that I'm going to go over to. This is a larger tub, but the key here is that it has the locking tops. That and also, it has more height to this tub, so the isopods can't get out of it as easily. I have more distance between the, the uh, substrate, the top of the substrate, and the ventilation. So it makes it that much harder for these isopods to get up to those, to any um, open areas as, as, if they can. And again, they have the locking tops. Let me show you another container. I'll be right back. This is actually a tub that I use for our geckos. This is a, uh, what I call a, a mini tub. We have it on our mini rack for our geckos. And it's about a six to nine quart. I can't remember how, how big it is, but again, it has the locking top. I cut the, uh, the surface out and I put the screen top in there and it works out perfect. It has just enough height. And I keep our small cultures in here. Uh, I have gray, uh, striped grays in here. And I keep any uh, starter cultures that I, I uh, pick up in a tub like this, this size, so that I can monitor them a little bit better rather than pit, putting them in a bigger tub. So this is another tub that I'm going to go over to. Oh, and away from those tubs. I think that this will solve the problem. So once I switch over to these different tubs, I'm hoping that that resolves the problem. We have enough Sevilla, obviously, to get back next year into the breeding and rebuild that colony. Well, I made it through the whole video, uh, not too many ums and, and interruptions, and I don't think I swore once. I'll have to go back to the video, but uh, that's a good thing. Thank you, Angie, for the suggestion. I hope that everybody understands the issue that we have. If you had any have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment below. I'll get back to the comment as soon as I possibly can. I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and make sure that you hit that notification all, and you'll receive future updates to the Isopod blog. Thank you very much for watching.